Connecticut did lead the Big East heading into Cincinnati, but a 27-3 shellacking ended that. But can the Bearcats gear it up one more week defensively and stop West Virginia's high-powered attack? Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz, glad to be with you on the Toyota College Football Preview, breaking down 8-1 West Virginia, number 6 in the BCS, and 8-2 Cincinnati, who still could get to a BCS bowl game with a win Saturday night and then just a little bit of help down the stretch. Let's take a look at the Big East standings. Connecticut and West Virginia, each with one conference loss, but they end the season playing each other in Morgantown, so that'll shake itself out. But then you see Cincinnati right behind, and if you can win against West Virginia and the Mountaineers beat the Huskies, then you've got the Bearcats with the tiebreakers over both of them. That, of course, assuming Pittsburgh loses again. And we bring in Spencer Tillman from Houston, as we do every week, to look at this game. Basically, a lot of football left to be played. That's what that says. But for West Virginia, it's not just about the Big East, Spence, because if Rich Rodriguez's squad can run the table, they still have that shot at the BCS National Championship game because the three Big 12 teams in front of them all have to play each other. Well, that's one half of the equation that we had, or at least most of us had at the beginning of the year, was USC versus West Virginia. So they could backdoor, but they need a lot of stuff to happen. I think right now their attention is focused on what, in effect, is an elimination game for those possibilities. Uh, as this is a matchup, I think, between two teams, one has an outstanding quarterback and one has a tremendous defense. I think that's what the matchup is in this one. And the quarterback you're talking about is Pat White, who, you know, he still has a little bit of a shot at the Heisman Trophy, or at least getting to New York. Leads an offense that again is in the top 10 in scoring. Does that work uh, against the Cincinnati defense with what Pat White does? Yeah, it does because, again, you know what they're going to do offensively. They're going to spread you out. And, again, they may not necessarily be the most prolific team, but they're balanced, and they're very dangerous in that regard. And I used to think of the old West of the Virginia Tech teams that used to have that balance with Michael Vick years ago. This West Virginia team reminds me of that same type style of play, only their quarterback and, and, and his ability to pass the ball is a little bit more proficient. So they're very dangerous. And so, absolutely, they do provide a very formidable a matchup for this team. And the one thing they don't do is turn the football over, just 14 on yeah. the season. Season, but they did lose three fumbles against Louisville last Thursday night. A big part of the reason the Cardinals were able to come back and almost pull off the upset in beating West Virginia. But now the Mountaineer squad takes on the, the team that leads the nation with yeah. 35 takeaways. Uh, it, you've got the battle there here that, that seems to be the key to the matchup. That's right. Cincinnati's been kind of vacillating, Jason, back between third and fourth in turnover ratio. So that's the reason why I said this matchup is between a quarterback and a team that does not fumble the football versus a team, again, that's in the upper echelon in terms of creating offensive opportunities by getting the ball defensively and forcing fumbles and interceptions. So really, this is going to be an interesting game. Ball security, efficiency of an offense versus the reckless style that Cincinnati likes to play. And this last four-game stretch, they've won four in a row, largely on the strength of their defensive play. That's going to be a classic matchup. It sure will be, and we saw a lot of that at South Florida. Uh, Spence, one other key here for Cincinnati is a guy I know you love. Who is he? Well, Jacob Ramsey, the running back, I think what he's going to do is provide some opportunity for Cincinnati to at least vie for an upset. If they don't get him going on the ground, then you're going to have a prolific balance attack on the field much more than you want them in West Virginia. So I think if Ramsey can come along and control the clock a little bit more, I think they'll have a shot. It'll be an outside shot but they'll have one nonetheless. If you're Cincinnati, you want the ball at least 35 minutes in this football You've got to have it. Spence, who wins? Big battle in the Big East. Who takes it? West Virginia is going to win this ball game. They're just too loaded offensively and too balanced. So the only way I see Cincinnati sneaking an upset is if Pat White goes down with an injury. Yeah, I agree with you. I think West Virginia goes into Cincinnati and, and wins this one as well. Spence, we will see you Saturday, and uh, we'll talk about it then. All right, Jason, we'll see you. Folks, the Mountaineers have played five times at Cincinnati. They won all five. They go for six, kicking it off at 7.45 p.m. Eastern Saturday night. For more on this game or any other this weekend, be sure to stay with CBSSports.com and watch everything else on the CBS Audience Network. For Spencer Tillman, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care.